Today we're going to FDM print some resin pre-supported minis. I'm Jacob from Painted for Combat and let's get right into it. For anyone who doesn't know, this video is a part 2, sort of a follow up to a video that I did a couple of days ago, exploring using resin supports for FDM miniatures. From taking a look at FDM specific pre-supported models, briefly touching on using custom supports for FDM, and finally having a go at adapting resin pre-supports for better use on FDM machines, using a tool that I'm calling resin to FDM. This is a simple add-on for Blender that turns this tedious process of editing models into a super simple series of button clicks, without you hardly needing to know how to use Blender at all. And you can download it for free from the links in the description right now. This process not only allows us to beef up the resin supports so that they're compatible with FDM nozzle sizes and printing methods, but also allows us to pull the model apart in our slicer, enabling us to increase the print speed for these supports because we do not need miniature level detail and care being put into printing the support material. And, well, I reckon the results speak for themselves. If you want the full rundown for how we got to this point, and sort of the method behind the madness to what you'll be seeing here today, you can check out that first video, where you can see my full exploration of this and the evolution of my process. But long story short, this tool lets us bring an advanced FDM or resin pre-supported model into Blender, pull it apart so that we can separate the mini from the supports, then for a resin model it'll let us thicken up those supports as much as we see fit, and finally we'll ensure that we can safely pull this model back apart once we get into Orca Slicer so that we can speed up the printing of the supports. So without further ado, let's jump into Blender. There are currently two versions of this tool, resin to FDM Lite, which is what we'll explore here first, as well as resin to FDM Advanced, which will be made available to my Patreon supporters. Resin to FDM Lite is currently available for free download for Blender 4.0 or Blender 4.3.2, though the version for Blender 4.0 has some nice quality of life features that I couldn't quite get working in 4.3.2 yet, and Resin to FDM Advanced is only for Blender 4.0 at this time. So if you do need to grab either version, probably go for 4.0. To download older versions of Blender, you can go to their Release Index page, which I'll leave a link to down below. Here you can find all previous versions of Blender. And if you're on a Windows machine, you'll just be looking for the .msi file. And just a quick side note disclaimer, don't go downloading versions of Blender from anywhere that isn't part of the official blender.org website. Right, onto it. Once downloaded, you'll simply want to run the installer, you can change where it's installing if you have multiple drives, but otherwise you can just go through the motions. And once that's done, hit finish, and now we can open up Blender. To download the plugin itself, simply follow the link in the description and download the .zip file for the version of Blender that you're using. And you don't need to unzip this file, it's ready for Blender as it is. With that downloaded we can come back into Blender, come up to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. If you're in 4.3.2 there will be a little drop down here with the option to install from disk, but for us we can just click Install. Now you'll just want to go ahead and find wherever you downloaded resin to FDM and select the zip file. And just like that, resin to FDM will now be good to go whenever you open up Blender. And if you are using Blender 4.0, while we're here, just go ahead and search STL and enable the STL format add-on. This just allows Blender to actually be able to read, recognize, and use our miniature 3D files. So let's go ahead and come back to the main page here, and by hitting the N key, we can bring up the toolbar. From here you should now see resin to FDM. Let's bring that up and drag the window out so that we can see the full tool. The very first thing we want to do is clear the plate. This will remove the default scene. Or if you've finished processing and exported a mini, it will remove it ready for the next one. Now we can import model. Simply navigate to your pre-supported STL file and bring it in. Depending on your computer and the size of the model itself, it might take a couple of seconds to import. But once the model is here, we can go ahead and split by loose parts. This will pull the model apart and separate the miniature from the hundreds of tiny support pieces. Now all you need to do is select the mini, and if the model has multiple parts, or you decided to import multiple objects in a single file, you can use shift left click to select multiple pieces and then simply click assign miniature. Blender will then merge and rename the selected pieces as miniature, and will merge all the supports back together at the same time. If you're using an Arbiture Minis model or any FDM specific pre-supported file, you can go ahead and skip over the thickened step, but for converting over any resin pre-supported files, this is going to be the next step. The reason we're doing this is that resin pre-supports will often be too thin for FDM slices to pick up, or too weak for a successful print, so we want to thicken them up just enough for success on an FDM printer. 
I've found 0.05 to be a good starting point, but every sculptor's supports will be slightly different, and you may need to do a test print or two to find that balance between successful print and easy support removal for each sculptor's supports. For example, models by Bite the Bullet go perfectly with a 0.05 thickness, while so far I've found that 0.07 is better for Puppets War. Each will be a little bit different. Once you've added your thickness, you can take a quick look around the model and make sure it all looks okay, and then you can go ahead and apply the thickness. This is important to do, otherwise the next step won't work quite right. Now that we have our mini separate and our supports thickened up, we can generate a level cube. All that this does is adds a small piece of material to the miniature itself, which will sit flush with the bottom of the supports. This just makes sure that once we separate these two back out in Orca Slicer, that the mini and the supports are the correct height, and it doesn't drop the mini to the build plate. And this is why it's important that we applied that thickness in the last step. Otherwise this cube won't take that extra thickness into account, and the models will be slightly off. But that's it, we can now go ahead and export the models. And this is where the Blender version kind of matters. If you're in 4.0, when you click export it should take you to wherever you imported your mini from, but in 4.3.2 I couldn't quite achieve the same effect just yet, so you'll have to relocate the folder each time. If you find that that gets really annoying, you can always just bookmark the location when you import your model, and it will save it up here on the left. Now just name your mini and save. Same goes for the supports. Export, name, save, and we can head over to Orca Slicer. Personally, I'm going to be using my 0.08 Painted for Combat print profile. This is for the A1 with a 0.2 nozzle, which you can find over on my Patreon Discord if you're interested. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that auto supports are turned off. But if you're not interested in jumping over onto the Patreon, the Fat Dragon Games print profile for the A1 would probably be your next best bet. With that in mind, let's go ahead and find the folder where we saved our model. And from here, we're going to select both pieces of our model and drag them into Orca Slicer together. This should bring up this pop-up, asking if we want to import it as one model with two parts. Just go ahead and click yes. This will ensure that our mini and the supports are lined up correctly. Now, if you don't want to bother with changing the layer heights of the supports, you could simply go through and adjust the speeds now. But I do want to adjust the layer height separately as it drastically decreases the print time. So from here, I'll go ahead and right click the model, split into objects. This will separate the two pieces out, and as we can see, that cube that we made on the build plate is making sure that our model doesn't drop away from the supports. Now we can see that we have access to the layer height of the supports as well as all of their other settings independent from the miniature. For layer height, I like to use double the default, which for my profile will make that 0.16. I go ahead and set all of the line widths down to 0.2, walls drop down to 2, and all of the speeds I set to 50 millimeters a second. We want these supports printing up fast, but not so fast that they get snapped off or fail and 50mm feels like a nice middle ground, but of course feel free to experiment with these numbers. And now we should just be able to slice and print. At this stage it will try and throw up a few errors here. It will usually tell you that your model has empty layers between the level cube and the mini, and will let you know that there is some overlapping g-code where the supports slightly sync into the model. But I haven't had any issues with any of these errors so far, even with supports that have quite a deep contact distance, so personally I think these are all pretty safe to ignore. There are a couple of things to look out for with this process, so we'll quickly cover those before we take a look at the advanced version of the tool. The bad first layer. Some supports will bulge out slightly at the bottom if they're thickened too much, so you might not have full contact on the first layer. Very simple fix to this is just grab your mini and the supports together, and drag them down ever so slightly until this white outline is showing as a solid bottom layer. And then there is bad raft adhesion. Some pre-supported miniatures have this spiderweb style raft, and this isn't great for FDM build plate adhesion. Luckily the fix to this is nice and simple. Just go ahead and enable a brim on your print. I usually opt for about 5mm and change the distance to zero, just so that it sits flush with the raft. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at Resin to FDM Advanced, the Patreon exclusive version of this tool. And this is just where it's at for the time being, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of updates and added features as requests or ideas come in over on the Discord. And just a quick reminder that the advanced version of the tool is only compatible with Blender 4.0. But here's the process I'm working with so far. When first opening the tool you'll see that there is now a set folder button. This will allow you to set a file path that all of the import and export buttons will refer to when opening the file browser. The import STL and split by loose parts are the same as in the normal version, but as you can see we have a few new options down here. These enable you to set up and alter the support tips separately from the rest of the support structure which will be really handy for models that have more flimsy supports. Something more like this. Firstly, the Detect Support Tips. 
This searches for any tapered or cone shaped objects, and filters out anything larger than the value determined on this slider. This does mean it won't always be perfect, and you might need to select the last couple of supports or deselect a few little bits that accidentally get picked up, but once you are happy with your selection, you can go ahead and assign as support tips. Now, same as before, go ahead and select the miniature itself and assign as the miniature. And now we can see that we have three objects, our mini, the supports, and the support tips. And from there we now have two sets of thickness controls. So you can thicken the support tips by let's say the usual 0.05 amount, but beef up the towers by 0.2 if you really wanted to. You just want to make sure that the supports don't start clipping into the models. And this additional thickness to the supports themselves might make that bad first layer problem a little bit more common, but same solution as before, just grab both parts and sync them into the build plate until they're sitting flush. And finally, the last extra feature for the moment is a simple open folder button. This will simply open your designated file path in the Windows file browser, just so that you can quickly find your exports and drag them straight into Orca. So there you have it, resin to FDM. A tool to either speed up the printing of the supports on advanced FDM models, or a way of adapting resin pre-supported models to better fit your FDM printer. If you like what I do and want to support the channel, or just want to get your hands on the advanced version of this tool, please do consider checking out the Patreon down below. For just a couple of bucks you'll get access to the Painted for Combat Community Discord, printer profile downloads, and resin to FDM Advanced. Or at the higher tiers, get access to some awesome monthly FDM ready bases like this month's release Rocky Outcrops. Sculpted bases designed to print on FDM machines with no supports, and designed in a way to decrease the amount of layer lines visible on the final print. And exclusively for the month of March we have some awesome additional FDM ready terrain files, kindly donated by Forbidden Prints. And an extra huge thank you to my Painted for Display tier supporters. Your support means so much for me continuing to make content here on the channel. And a special thank you to the newest member of this tier, Ultimate Dude 80 and your badge that will now forever be on the display shelf. So whether you're looking to jump into the Discord, grab Risen to FDM Advanced, or pick up all of those awesome FDM ready STL files, jump on over to the Patreon, links down below. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments section down below. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the development and use of this tool, and any other awesome projects that I get up to here on the channel. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.